Jesus Christ is real. Hello? It said Jesus Christ is real. That's it. Okay. Is that your evidence for God? Uh, You're done. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I probably got your name wrong. How would how do you like it to be pronounced? Jerbo. Jerbo. Yeah. Welcome to the show. How can we help you? And I'm, as Thank I say, you. I apologize for keeping you waiting. No problem. Um, my question would be, or maybe I should give a backstory. I'm from Sweden. I'm 19 years old and I met my first religious person when I was 17, 18 maybe. And Sweden isn't really a religious country. So I'm wondering what like your thoughts and how to deal with religion in general and how come or what you think the US is so religious compared to other other countries. That's an interesting point, and having only visited America once, uh, not knowing a great deal about it, its history, I don't think I'm the right person to answer that, nor, I suspect, is non-stamp. So, Thunder, I'm sorry, the onus is on you. Why is America uh, so religious? Well, um, I've often thought that the origin of the uh, deep religious sentiment in America... Um, goes back to the sort of people who went to America. Um, and it was people fleeing religious persecution, which is, if you like, a self-selected community of, you know, and it's just say for sake of argument that there is a, a biological propensity um, to a religion, then that would be a self-selecting criterion. And they've all gone off to America. Let's just also say that um, the ones who didn't like being persecuted were um, the, the the least tolerant um, or the most strict religions. Again, something you would expect to propagate well through society. Um, so it's basically um, England exported all of its religious nutters to America and all of its criminals to Australia. Um, simpler times, but... Um, I, 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 in many ways, I, I think that um, actually no. There's one other factor because America has this now great diversity of people fleeing from religious persecution. Um, the one thing that you really can't have in the government is the government saying which religion is right, because that would be instantly divisive. So America is now constrained to have this sort of secular government with all these sort of religious um, uh, oh. fragments. Um, so I think that with a, with America, a lot of what you're looking at is um, the, the history of the people who primarily settled there. Um, I could put in some further analogies, but I think I'll leave it at that. I happen to think it's an interesting question, um, and I don't have an answer. Uh, but I think that America should look at some of the Scandinavian countries and see how much better they're getting on than America is. On that note, uh, was there anything else? Because um, Stephen is still trying to get through to us. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to take his call, but I've got two more people that I've got lined up. But sure, if you've got another question, hit us. Uh, just like a follow-up question. Sure. It's uh, what you think you could do to solve the problem with uh, America being so religious? Like, should you just keep doing what you're doing or pass some law against I, I don't think, I don't think that any passing of any law is going to have any effect on the way that people think. Uh, time and time uh, again I on this show, we are asked what the answer is, and we say education. I think that as well as education, I think we need to keep on doing what we are doing. I think that the atheist movements right. and the skeptical movements in America should carry on what they're on, on, on doing what they're doing. And it appears, if opinion polls are to be taken seriously, that it is having an effect. The atheist movement in America is the highest um, rated, increased uh, rated uh, organization or belief system or whatever you want to call it. I'm sorry. 
I'm I'm losing control of my words because it's now a quarter past three in the morning for me. But uh, it it is yes, I know it's later for you, but uh, it is having an effect, and I think that we should just carry on doing that. Laws have no effect. I disagree. On the way people no 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 th- th- that that's just and this is why what the NCSE does in America is so important because if they do actually pass laws that allow them to teach creationism in schools or to not teach evolution or any of these things, this will actually either slow or reverse um, such trends that um, it basically is a license to indoctrinate people. Right? So preserving the, the, the level playing field, so to speak, of, or of keeping, science, uh, keeping dogma out of science classes um, is, is both necessary and, and uh, an important battle to fight. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think if you do it. allow if legislation that was interpretation to be passed, I misunderstood it. And yes, I would totally agree with that. What I was suggesting that to pass laws that you shall not believe in X, Y, or Z is, is a nonsense. That's the way I was coming from it. But it is quarter past three. Uh, so I apologize. Uh, Jebra, thank you very much indeed for the call. I am going to move on because, as I say, Stephen keeps on threatening he's going to come back with evidence of God, and I so want to hear this. Uh, but, oh, would you believe it? He's now offline. So we're going to go on to probably what will be our last caller, who is... Oh, I hate having to pronounce these names. Dang art is... There we go. Hi. I hate having to pronounce these names. Dang Art is there. We go. Hi. Can you mute Blog TV? Hang art is there. We go. Echo. Can you mute Blog TV? Uh, he's managed to mute himself, but not Blog. Oh, so, so he's probably fumbling to try and get Blog muted. And then there's also he, someone he, uh, who's sending it raw five o six nine. Uh, says in a blog contact, you should bring me on. Don't be afraid. Well, I'm not afraid, but like everyone else, you've got to send a contact request through Skype to the Magic Sandwich Show. As soon as you've done that, we'll get you on, particularly as you seem to be a theist. If you can't follow simple, basic instructions like that, I can't help you. Every I mean, we, other we sort person of, manages to do it. Why is it only the bloody theists that are so we, incompetent they yeah. can't send a Skype request or they can't fucking work their microphone? But we were sort of touched on this earlier with uh, non-stamp, that, you know, of all the Christians, the number who have actually read the Bible is, I don't know, 10% or less. And of those, the number who are actually willing to defend their faith is a fraction of that. And of those who are actually going to be calling into a show like this, you're into parts per thousand, parts per ten thousand, or less. Into the parts of the psychopath, the sociopath, and the insane. Exactly. Anyway, let's hope our next caller is not insane. Dang, welcome to the show. Oh, uh, you need to unmute on Skype. Skype, unmute on Skype. Type out your question um, in the same box that you were typing it in, and I'll read it out, and we'll address it that way. Uh, Dan, um, let me go to your question, which reads, I am just wondering, what are your thoughts on talking to your kid about your beliefs? Me and my ex are both atheists, but she, I presume daughter, doesn't want us to... Oh, no, sorry. She doesn't want us to talk to our kid about our beliefs but she knows much less than I do because uh, she just doesn't care okay thank you Dan, I'm going to remove you because we obviously we can't communicate with you directly and we've also got a man who's had 32 years in Christ to come follow um, what do you tell your children I don't know I guess you tell them the truth I, know. I don't know. I, I don't really Very understand. I don't have kids. Stuff. I don't really understand the question that much. What, what do you yeah. tell your kids? You, you tell them what you think is true. I don't know. I, sorry, we I need, don't have an answer. Now, con- uh, no, concordance. If you were here, um, and I, yeah, I, 
<laughs> concordance is the man when it comes to this sort of shit. Um, but I think his sentiment is very much you teach them the methodology, not the conclusions. Right? You teach them the, methodol- the methodology of how to um, tell bullshit from non-bullshit. Um, and like you were saying earlier, the, the, the central message of Christianity is gibberish. You know, the idea that he sacrifices himself to himself such that he doesn't have to punish people. I mean, this is just crazy. Right? Anyway. Yeah. Well, we'll leave that because we've got Raw, who is the man who has had 32 years in Christ. Are you with us, sir? Yeah, there I am. There we go. How's it going, guys? It's going very well indeed, sir. How's, how have your 32 years in Christ been for you? I've been some ups and downs. I bet. What have you, you know, got for us? Well, what do you want to know? Um, I'm sorry, it's a call-in show. People normally call in with a topic. Okay, or a now, no, no, DPR, what, 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 why is the central um, message of Christianity so crazy? This idea that God would actually sacrifice himself to himself so that he doesn't have to kill people. I mean, why do you find that a convincing argument? Because, because he's holy. That's, that's why. Uh, so had, if you're holy, he had, he had, that he had means... No, 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 you just not torture people. Thunder, that would be the, thunder, that, that go, would be the before honorable. Before we pursue thing. this any further, because this one I think could get a little bit sick. I just I just want to ask, uh, Rob. Um, presumably, you you are a believer. Um, what is your best piece of evidence for the existence of your God? I met him. What? I met him in person, thirty-two years ago. What did he look like? Uh, <laughs> he didn't look like anything. <laughs> I didn't see him in, in the way that I'm seeing you all on the screen. Uh, let me give you a real short of what happened. Okay? Oh, please. I, I wasn't raised in a, a religious family at all, okay, first of all. Had no upbringing in the Bible whatsoever. Had an alcoholic father, uh, was home on leave, ran into some buddies, was about to get laid by an old girlfriend. Okay, well, it didn't happen in a church. We are listening. She, we don't want to interrupt she, you. Do carry she, on. she said a phrase. The next thing I know, after she said that phrase, he was in the room. And not only was he in the room, but Satan was in the room, too. So hang on. We've got a foursome going now. We've got you, yes. X, yes. God, and Satan all in yes. the same room. All in the same room. Right. And at, at, at that point, it scared the hell out of me. Now I didn't. I were, you, were, were you worried that you'd have I, I, I to pay for them? Crazy. Were you uh, worried because you'd have to pay for them as well? What do you mean? Was I worried for what? Because you'd have to pay for them as well. Pay for them. Well, you pay for the room. Uh, no, it was, we were at a party. We were oh, at someone's okay. house. Okay. Swingers we, we, party. A what? Swingers. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could say that. I was into the whole drug scene and yeah. and everything, and, and we were all... I've been you know, there many times, and if it hadn't yeah, been the show, we I all, would have been there tonight as well, but okay, we were all I'm with you. And, you know, we've been drinking, and uh, you, do you want to know the whole ungodly so truth? So, you I'm, were on drugs, and you were drinking, and you saw yeah. a vision of somebody that you can't describe, and you no, expect I, to take you no, seriously. No, 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 I didn't see him. I, uh, no, I don't care if you take me seriously or not. I mean, that's not the point. I'm just telling you what happened. You know, I, if, if, I, if I told you that I had a pit bull sitting right here next to me, you know, would, would you believe that? I mean, it's, it, this, we're talking about two different things, though, right? We're talking about Jesus Christ and the person that claims to be well, the cure for uh, death. The difference between the two is a pit bull may exist. Jesus Christ right? may not have existed. All right, but Dawkins even admitted that in one of his debates that Jesus Christ was an actual historical. He figure. may well have been. What what, well, what Dawkins would dispute is whether the uh, historical records about his existence are accurate, as would I. 
Well, the point, let me get back to the story. Okay, okay. let's get back to the story. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She, she said one phrase. I was shocked. I was, like I said, I was Just expecting get to, to the great. phrase. What's the phrase? The phrase was Bob, and that's my first name. Bob, lately I've been thinking a lot about Jesus. Instantly he was in the room. Yeah, that's all it took. Yeah, power of suggestion. It's great, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. And you know, you can get so, them all. Uh, it just out of interest, if she had just said, "If she had said, uh, lately I've been thinking a lot about Muhammad," well, um, you know, and Muhammad had suddenly been in the room with you, would you then be believing in Muhammad? Because lots of yeah, I mean, I res- a lot of people you. experience yeah. Muhammad ahead. in the same way that you experience Jesus. Yeah, we're not, you know, and and you want to jump to Muhammad? We're talking about Jesus here. Listen, and they're man, talking about my I, I have a lot of I have a lot of respect for you and this guy right here. You do you're the stamp guy, right? You do some awesome some awesome animation, man. Thank I really you. Uh, I, you do. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's it's very negative to what I know to be truth. But see that's the thing. I, I wasn't looking for Jesus. Well, Sometimes he comes looking for you. Okay. Well, if now, I, I have a friend. I have a friend who uh, I was camping with her. Uh, we're camping with a big group of people, and uh, in the morning I just happened to ask you know, how'd you sleep. She said, oh, "I've been awake since four o'clock." Uh, why? She said, "Oh, you know, a man came into my tent." Go, what are you talking about? And she says, "You know, a spiritual manifestation of a man who was, you know, local to that area. You know, we're in a nature sort of place." And she said that that he'd been sitting in, in the corner of his of her tent when she woke up at like four o'clock and talked to him. She talked to him for three hours. Is that a convincing story to you? What, did she claim it was Jesus Christ, and did it turn no. her life around? No, okay. no, no. No, well, we're talking about two different things. I'm talking about, no. I'm talking about what changed my life. No, and give my, answer my question. Do you believe that that's what happened to her? Do you believe her story? If, if, she, <laughs> if she was talking about Jesus Christ, and it changed her life, yeah, yes, listen. I would believe her. No, she was but not you, did, you about- just you just said you know no you, you you're, you're trying to flip it over onto something else, brother. I'm telling you, I'm giving you my honest. Do I sound like I'm lying? Why would I lie? Why, Listen, why do you does, know, does I'm, not, I'm not being paid to be on your show, and I respect Thunderfoot. I respect I respect you. I already told you that you make some great YouTube videos. You know, I've even done uh, a slam video at our Magic Sandwich Show friend at the top. <laughs> you probably never saw it, but I, but I did, you know, try to get his attention, which he, he never responded, I don't think, to. That's very but, interesting, sir. But but the point of the matter is it changed my life, okay? My whole family was not That religious. does not mean the delusion that you had. It, okay, I've had a delusion now for a 32 Jesus Christ. Years. Well, I'm yeah, so actually, no, 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 no. Uh, Raw, let me ask you yeah. a question. There are let, people let me answer my question. Of all, hang on, one, one, one moment. People of all religions all over the world have these sorts of experiences. And in this particular case, yours featured someone called Jesus, right? Yeah. And other people experience all sorts of other characters in their um, experiences. Now, why is your experience any more valid than theirs? Because it changed my life. It changed their well, lives well, as well. Raw, well, I've, I've heard of people who have been abducted by aliens. Their accounts are as convincing as yours. And the, it has changed their lives. Do you believe that they have been abducted by aliens and probed on a spaceship and then returned to Earth? Do you find that story convincing? Well, I see your point. You know, if you, if you, if you well, can't I'm believe it, why, why would you believe Answer the question. Do you find that persuasive? No, no, I don't believe in UFOs. I believe in Jesus Christ. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Right, right. I'm I'm, I'm a born-again believer. I claim to to be a child. To take this back to the core point, what makes your experiences categorically different from all of these other people who have these spiritual experiences that change their lives? What are the metrics that separate your experience from theirs. The thing that separates is I'm not them, and they're not me. Right. Let me put the question That's another separate. way. Let me, or, or please, let me put the question another way. Say that I'm approached by you with your account, 
at the same time, I'm approached by a Muslim who happened to see the Prophet Muhammad, or Allah, maybe, and also a third person who says that they were abducted by an alien and their story is not dissimilar. Right. They're all trying to convince me that their account is accurate. How, as an independent observer, do I determine which of the three of you, if any, is actually accurate? You, you can't without God's help. And, that, and, and that's, We're done. that's, 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 the, that's, well, okay. Hang on. Uh, did you, did you say that you need God's help to understand that the message is from God? You, you, God is the one that reveals himself to you. Just like when we initiated this call, I had to yes, accept but, this but, call. But no, 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 but that, that's, that's exactly the same as everyone else is claiming. But I'm not and everyone you're else. Not actually I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, I have to go back to one of the first things that you said. Your description was that you were in a room and Jesus revealed himself to you. You saw yeah. him. No, I didn't see him. Uh, okay, I my, felt my bad. I felt it. So how did he reveal himself him. to you if you did not see him? I felt, I literally felt his presence. Where did you feel it? All over the room. The entire room. And this was okay. a swingers party when you were drunk and high on drugs. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I was seriously sober when that happened. Instantly sober. And scared. It was scary. I, hey, man, you know what? I don't blame you for smiling. I don't blame you for laughing. There, there was a time in my life that I, I didn't believe it either. Anybody that, you know, I'm from the South. And anybody that came up to me and started talking about religion or the Bible, I said, get away from me, you Jesus freak, you Bible thumper. So and let me, okay. let me, let's, 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 let's carry on the story then. So oh, okay. you're, you're, you're drunk, you're on drugs, you're in a room about to have sex with an ex-girlfriend, then you feel Jesus all over you. What happened next? At that point, the best the best way I can describe it is I was given a vision. A and vision. I, okay, a so vision. now you have seen something. So, Tell so us now I have a visual. Is. Yes, I'm in a pit, and I'm up to my chest in what I perceive to be. Now go ahead and laugh. That's 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 okay. What I perceive to be human feces, my own ways. How did you know they were human feces? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know how I knew that, but I knew it. <laughs> I look at him laughing. <laughs> you gonna be all right? <laughs> I'm fine. It's okay. At that, at, at that point, at that, let me finish. At that point, I heard a voice, and it said, "Do you want you to be have clean? Strange fetishes. Do you want to be clean? Well, in the position you were in at the moment, I would have thought... And, yeah, and brother, yeah. let me tell you, I wanted out of that pit. I bet you did. And I and I did say yes. Okay, and then what happened? The roofies wore off and you I, woke up? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't up roofies. No, so you've had, the, you've had this experience in a room somewhere. What, then, okay. what happened the, that morning, it was, it was late at night. Mm -hmm. We walked out of the house together. We didn't have sex that night. The lady ended up becoming my wife and the mother of both of my children mm -hmm. later on. Yeah. And from that time on, all I knew is I had to get my hands on a Bible. That's, and, I, and I started reading. Uh, uh, having put your, laid your hands on a Bible, did you actually read it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cover I, I, go ahead. Cover to cover. Well, better than that. I was actually a very poor reader. And at the time, this was back in 1979. So uh, December of, of 1979. What I did was I went out and got the Bible on cassette. And I had jobs where I, where I drove a lot. And I listened to it over and over and over and over and over again until I'd wear out a set. And then I'd give the good tapes that were left over to whoever wanted them and buy another one. That went on for years. So do you think that you get your morality from the Bible? I think that modern-day religion is a crock. 
I asked you a question. Do you think that you get your morality from the Bible? No, I get I get my morality from the Holy Spirit that that dwells in me. So the Holy Spirit is not reflected in the Bible, in your opinion. The the Bible, the Bible is <laughs> is a lot of things. Okay, but it, John, I think, said it best. He said, "These if if all the things were going to be written about Jesus Christ, the world itself couldn't contain the books that should be written." But these things were written so that you might believe. How do you determine, so the short how do you determine, determine which no. part? I'm sorry. How do you determine which parts of the Bible you think are accurate and correct, and which parts are not? There are times that that same feeling, okay, over the years has come upon me. In I've lost audio. It looks like we may have lost audio from Ron. Am I back? Yes. You're back. Oh, what happened? A little hiccup there. But anyway, what, what was your question? I, I, I lost track now. Can you give us a, 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 a couple well, of let sentences? Let me repeat the question. He asked what the question was. Can um, I say something to you guys? Well, well, no, you asked what the question was, and I'll repeat it. How do you know which parts of the Bible are accurate and true and the word of the Holy Spirit and which parts are not? How do, what, by what metric, by what test... Do you determine that? The Holy Spirit. I can't help. Non-stamp. Yes. Where are we? Well, I don't Hang know. Hang on. Let, let me interject. All right. I, I, you... I have a question. No, I haven't. Okay. I haven't. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me. Um, uh, what's the name? Raw. Raw. You said uh, the Holy Spirit. Me, you get your morality from the Holy Spirit. Bob, okay. You get your morality from the Holy Spirit. Well, yeah. yeah okay. You, do, have, do other people... You have to do label it, yeah. Okay, so do other people also get their morality from the Holy Spirit? I don't know where other people get their morality from. Oh. Okay, but wouldn't... <laughs> do you care? Uh, about other people? Yeah. I care about you guys. No, I mean, no, no. Do, do you care where other people get their morality from? As far as what? I don't understand. Like the, 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 you say you get yours from the Holy Spirit, but you don't know where other people get theirs from. And, and I'm asking whether you care where they get theirs from. I think a lot of Christendom gets their morality from religion, just like the Pharisees of, Ma of Matthew 23, and they, they need to be rebuked. I think there's a lot of money grabbers in, in big, huge mega churches that are going to hell. I okay. think there's so where should they get the morality from? The, what? They should get it from the Holy Spirit. Okay, but you're saying like you're the only one that you're aware of that does? Well, I can't answer for them, is what I'm saying. So I can only answer for myself. Other right, people, so, you know, go ahead. Sorry. Also, if anyone has a different understanding of morality than you do, like how do you approach that and negotiate where, where the truth is? You know, like where, where do you... How do you? What's your criteria? You know, for discovery? like some person, for example, says, "I don't know what your stance is on like gay marriage, for example." But if somebody who is equally as as much of a believer as you are had a different view of that issue than you, then how would you know that they're not getting their moral answer to that question from a better source or a reliable source than you? I wouldn't know. How would how, how would I know where they're getting their source from? You know what I'm saying? I know where yeah, I'm getting my, exactly my source from. I don't know where their source is coming from. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can't see in no, the I, 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 actually, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't understand what you're saying. Let's see if we can um, get greater clarification if we concentrate on one specific moral issue. Like, say, okay. for instance, is it okay to kill your son? No, I was going to think of something slightly <laughs> better than this, but... Thank you. Um, the issue of gay marriage. There are a lot of religious people that are against that. I don't know what your position is. I'm against um, the Bible. The Bible is clear that you know there was uh, several things that uh, God was against, and that's one of them. He well, was, well, was, well he hang on a second. Before we go any further, hang on. Before we go any further, you've already accepted that the Bible is full of things that may not necessarily be, necessarily be in accordance with the Holy Ghost's morality. And you get it from the Holy Ghost, not from the Bible. So why are you quoting well, I the never Bible? Said, I, I never said that the Bible wasn't 
So what, what do you know, back up the truck. I never said that the Bible wasn't a source for information. I said what I said was you, you asked you where I got morality from, from, and you said you got it from the Holy Ghost, not from yeah. the Bible. Yes. Correct. Yes. Right. I'm not, Are I'm you not, disputing that now? Do you want to? Re- yes. Any, I didn't understand what you were saying. Right. Yes. So if you get your morality from the Bible. Well, as a, it, it is a teaching. Do you get your morality the whole, from the let Bible? Me let me finish. No, it it's is a, a teaching, yes or no. Do you get your morality from the Bible? It is a teaching tool that the Holy Spirit uses. Right. Do you accept that guides, slavery, guides, you accept that slavery is morally acceptable? Truth. The Holy Do Spirit you accept guides. that slavery is morally acceptable? A lot of people have been slaves. Everyone on the planet right now answer is a slave. Answer the question. Do Dude, you answer accept the question. that slavery is morally acceptable? In God's eyes? Is that what you're asking? No, in fucking Santa Claus's eyes. What do you think oh, you're right. asking, man? Come on. You know, you know, <laughs> really, dude. You know, is that where is that where this is going? No, I'm asking a straightforward you question. Seem a little you're angry. Not answering it, and simple. I know why you're not answering it. Is Answer the slavery question, question, man? Yes or no? Is slavery is slavery acceptable? I would say it depends on what kind of slavery you're talking about. What kind of slavery are you talking about, man? There's lots of slavery. Let me ask. Let me ask a couple of questions. What type are you? Are you? A, are you a slave? Second, are you a slave? Stop. One second. What type of slavery do you say is potentially acceptable? Well, we're all slaves to this planet, for one. I get air. Non-stop. <laughs> okay. Let's now. Let's let's take something of this a little more clear cut. Um, um, so, for instance, God commands um, the effective genocide of several peoples, um, several tribes of people in Israel. So, is God commanding genocide okay? Is Does genocide become acceptable if God tells you to do it? If God told um, him I to... I there because I think we lost connection with him. He probably has not heard what you said. I already. I'm told. told to say, okay. Sorry, no. <coughs> so, um, why your point is better than mine? But hey, you might have more luck. Well, it's a little more clear cut: genocide versus gay marriage. So, um, it, does genocide become acceptable if God says that it's acceptable? As in the Bible, I mean, we're talking about track record here. These are events that were commanded by God in the Bible. So, does genocide become acceptable if God commands it? Is he gone? Um, yeah, he's gone. He's back again. He'll be he'll be here in a second. Man, what's with not answering questions? What the fuck is that? That's just no, no, what, blows but, my mind. No, the, the, let me let me have a conversation with you, non-stamp, because the reason he will not answer this question is because if he says yeah. Slavery is acceptable. He knows he's put himself in a difficult position. If he says, no, slavery is not acceptable, he knows he's put his God in a difficult position. This is the point that I was trying to get out of him. He knows that slavery, to him, is immoral. So that's why he come, the best he came up with it was, oh, what are you talking about, moral to God or moral to me? Yeah. We're going now for the historical track record, okay? Yes. The genocides commanded by God in the Bible, were they justifiable? Were they yeah. morally correct? Yeah. So killing children at the end yeah. of the sword is morally yeah. good in your eyes. If bet. God commands it. If, if it's God's will, you bet. Is there a difference between what is good for God and what is good for you? No. So killing, genocide, slavery is perfectly acceptable for you. For God it is. We have already established that there is no difference between what is good for God and what is good for you. So I'm one of God's, is I'm one of God's kids. Okay, I'm one of God's kids. That's what the Bible says. When you become born again, you be, you become a child of God. So whatever His will is for my life, and I don't think He's going to so, ask so me to just, go out just, just and smash interest. babies. Go ahead, Thunderbolt. Uh, yeah, he asked yeah. other so, people to go out and smash babies. He asked people to to kill their own children. He had yeah. them kill. He had them kill seven tribes of people that were in so the land. So, just of out of interest, Raw, if you were one of those members of one of those tribes, and God told you to go and plunge 
a sword through a crying child begging for their lives, you would have no problem in doing that. Because what God tells you to do is good, and you are just a vassal of God. If I had been living back in that time, yeah, you bet. You bet. The, the other, the and, other thing and is... The, the, this, this is the fundamental problem. If you can be convinced of absurdities, you can commit atrocities. All right. Well, Thunderfoot, can I say something? You guys have, have had three, you know, three against one here. Can I say something? Please do. There's, there's something worse that God is doing that you that you've overlooked. We're all condemned to death. All of us. That's you the whole. To, do you want to state something that isn't blatantly fucking obvious? Well, that's what's what's blatant, blatantly obvious is that Jesus no. came back to repair well, that. Well, the difference is, no, that's that's we, uh, deep, deep, yeah. let me let me pull up here. Whilst we might all be condemned, whilst we might all die, whether we like it or not, one thing that isn't certain is that we are willing to kill innocent children uh, because we hear voices in our heads. Right, that's what uh, we would call optional. Right, and you have said that your religion has actually screwed you up to the point where you would be willing to kill an innocent child begging for their lives because you heard voices in your head telling you to do it. Now, well, that's just <laughs> fucked up beyond all recognition. Well, you know, you think God is messed up, right? Uh, yes, I no, do. No, I don't. I, I don't uh, think in God's fact, if you up, watch my video, series of videos. God is not good. I think that I put forward, there is still the concluding part to come, but I think put, I put forward a reasonably good, uh, solid argument to show that God is not good. He is a deranged lunatic. And yeah, I, I saw I that. Through, right, okay. So, I, and what's interesting, uh, and this is a, something that I will comment upon uh, in the concluding part, in all the video responses <coughs> I have seen to each one of those parts, not one video response has actually addressed the issues and tried to put forward an argument that God is indeed good. So now's your opportunity. You can do that. You'll be the first one that has done it. But how can you possibly say God is good when he commits genocide? He endorses slavery. He endorses killing tribes and children he endorses hell. I, I can't remember off the top of my head the other ones that I've used, uh, examples that I've used. Oh, his capricious nature. He, he waits for 400 years in order to allow the Canaanites to become so sufficiently depraved that eventually he's going to cast judgment upon them. And how does he do that? By using his favorite child to do so. Uh, why is he capricious? Uh, when at the same time as the Canaanites are going down, the, the citizens of Nineveh get Jonah sent to them as a warning, and they turn around and everything's fine. Why didn't he do that? I, I've outlined all of these, and on each occasion I have done nothing than quote the King James Version of the Bible, which is the only source we have that is indicative of God's nature and character. Now tell me that God is good. God is good and evil. The Bible itself <laughs> says that. The Bible, hey, does it? Does, he made the garden. Think about what I'm saying. He put the trees in the garden. Dude. Why did he do that? Good question. That's a good question. I'll have to ask him that when I get there. I would. I would. You want my opinion? I'll give you my opinion of why I think he did that. Oh, we might as well take your opinion. We needed to know the difference between right and wrong. Why could he evil. just tell us that? Okay. Uh, he, he, I've he, got one here. He seems so, to be a hard ass. So God, no God, created, God, created, God created galaxy superclusters, right? In our galaxy, how many stars? You know, Thunder would, would know, but leave, me, leave it with me a minute. Like, you know, how many billions of stars in our own galaxy? One think of a couple of galaxies. a trillion average, I think. Think, yeah, half a trillion, okay. Then you think of a couple of galaxies, yeah, with a vast, vast empty space between them. Galaxy clusters. 
galaxy, like clusters of galaxies put together in the, in, in the universe that sort of, you know, turn around each other. You have super clusters. These things are beyond our scale of, of, of imagination by, you know, like by infinity. So then he takes a little planet, puts some water on it, puts some plants, puts some trees, because he wants to teach some beings the difference between good and evil, and then he's going to end it all and send half of us to hell. I think it's a little more than half, but yeah. Yeah, okay, great. That's, that's, that's a fabulous reason to create a universe. I don't think, you know, I, I had to agree with you because of the way you said it. Let, let me say my opinion, okay, of how I would say it, but I can't speak for God. You know what I mean? Oh, I good. I'm glad you can't speak think, for God because or else we got an, we, we got an eternal being, right? I don't know. Maybe he was bored. Are we? Are you basically saying that he just got so bored he thought, "I oh, know, I'll I'll start an experiment here, and I'll, I'll I'll put a little trap in there, and let I know not only have the trap, I'm going to have a little serpent that's going to see whether they can be tempted." Are you saying that this is all God's game? And if so, how can you say that God is all loving? I know that sounds sick, okay, the way that you've described it. How but else yes. would you describe yes. it? I, I would call it, you know, when you, when you, to answer the first part of your question, he had all this time, okay? To God, there is no such thing as time. He lives outside of time. Fabulous. We, we go around this little fireball, you know, and, and have time. But, the, the, yes, you're right. It does sound sick. I agree with that. But you worship this entity. Absolutely. You think Absolutely. that he is all loving. Absolutely. I follow, you think I, that I, he I is just. Yes. In the end, he will be just. You're sick. Well, <laughs> I, you know, maybe I am. Hmm. I got one. Like, have you ever considered but, but the you know what? That's... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, have you ever just, you know, looked at this and you're saying, yeah, it does look sick and it does look wonderful and good and glorious and grand and it does look sick and evil. Have you ever just entertained the thought that it could just be a, a badly thought out man-made invention? I have considered the, that, yeah. yeah and, and, doubts, and you, you, doubts you don't find doubts. that... Go ahead. You don't find that compelling. You're more inclined towards believing, yeah, well, it's impossibly glorious and and evil and sick at the same time, but it's more likely that that's real than it is just a, a badly thought out theology made up by people living in a world that they didn't understand. What I the way that I look at it, okay, is is that God put evil out there for a reason to destroy it. I want to explain what that God, God put is. God put evil out he there put it, for, in order to for destroy us, it. Like, for us to forever be able to know. Now think about it. You've, you've got a, a billion angels or so, or trillion. We don't know the, the number of the angels that fell. They they didn't learn their lesson. They left their first estate. They had it made. They were in a forever body and went, oh, I'm going to go down here and mess around with what God's doing. That was a trap. The Bible even says it. It was a trap. He trapped them. He was weeding out. You, have you ever heard the phrase, a threshing floor? Yes. Okay. They they would they would beat the bad, and the grain would fall into a pile, and then they whittle it up into the air, and the wind would carry the shucks of it, and it would fall on another pile. There is a separation of good and evil taking place. That's the only explanation I can give you. And I'm, well, and but, I'm, but, all right. I'm not. But, so that, yeah, yeah, I, I get that. But like, so you're saying that the, the most compelling sort of explanation for the universe that's so far been presented by any human is that a god. You know, created, as I said, galaxy superclusters in order to, on one tiny little blue planet, um, run this thing of create evil, um, trap people into thinking that it's more attractive than something, that the, the, its opposite, which is called good, and then punish them for re- forever for having fallen for the trap that he set. That's the most compelling sort of explanation of the, of the universe that you've heard so far. Like, have you not heard anything better than that? Have you not... Re- like really? Come on, man! There's there's so much better things out there. They might not be true, but like a, a being that invents evil and invents good in order to, you know, see whether lesser beings than itself will fall for the trap that it itself placed, 
and then fully knowing, omnipotently knowing, uh, omnisciently knowing that <laughs> later on it would have to become a manifestation of one of these lesser beings in order that it would sacrifice itself unto itself to appease itself for the anger that it caused itself by setting this trap wow. that it set in order to determine whether or not the lesser beings that it created would fall for the trap. That's the best explanation of the universe to you. I think in the end, yes. I, I think. Feel, I, feel I think. Very sorry for you. Well, well so dude, just I, would, I would just man, read read more widely, man. There are better explanations of, of the universe than that. That's a, that's a nonsense uh, like worldview. It's like you just just listen to it, just think about it, like let it sink in. Like to me, this sometimes you know I, I I think about this subject a lot. Obviously, as you know, you know I made fifty odd YouTube videos about it. I love reading books about it. Sometimes I'm I'm just suddenly struck by the the pure insanity of it. Like I'll just take one tiny bit and go, hold on a second, a god that sacrifices itself unto itself. <laughs> Yeah, I just sort of like it. Just stuns me sometimes, or or you and, know. And the thing is, not stunned. If I may just chip in here, the 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 sacrifice was a very pithy sacrifice because whether it is all part of the Trinity or not, who knows? Uh, a, a couple of hours, and apparently it was only eight, ten hours, if um, uh, records are to be believed, that he was on the cross, and then he's dead for three days, and then he comes back and spends eternity in heaven. That, I'm sorry, is not a sacrifice. I knew he was Prometheus coming back. had a sacrifice. That was something worth thinking, yeah, shit, he, he really paid a price for that. Just Jesus so dying on the cross is, is what not a, is a, a persuasive sacrifice. Thunder. Uh, just so we're all clear, Prometheus stole far from the gods and, if I remember rightly, was crucified and had his intestines eaten by birds, and then the gods like put his intestines all back, and it happens to have day after day after day for eternity. That was Prometheus's. Um, if I if I've got it right, I might you know. have. That was his punishment for stealing fire from the gods. Jesus spent a few hours on a cross, a couple of days laid yeah. out on a in a tomb, and then he gets back to life and spends the rest of his, his it, eternal life. Uh, on the right hand side of God. That I mean, let's I'm just sorry, ask you this is not a, a, a convincing sacrifice. Raw. It's shabby. Let me, let me, yeah. I, if, if I knew that I would be resurrected three days later, I would go and kill myself for all <coughs> sorts of reasons. It would benefit mankind. It's Raw. not a sacrifice. Let, Do you not get this? Yeah, let I, me just I, ask. I hear you. I just disagree. Well, how right, can you Raw. disagree? Tell me why you disagree with that. You, you think it was an easy thing that he did? But let me ask you this, Rob. No, please, it's Thunder. A powerful of being. course it was easy. He knew he that he would be resurrected. He knew that he would spend the rest of his life in heaven on the right-hand side of God. How can you tell me that this is a sacrifice? Explain so to me why am, I, why am I wrong? We're talking about the, the creator of the universe, and you've got another two trillion angels that didn't fall watching him you're not answering the that, question that answer the am, question please i am i have to i have to give you the behind the scenes this god you're, we're talking about is holy perfect if he does one thing wrong you said he's evil then what, what, hey he he presented evil to crush it that's a good thing in the end would you and, just and answer my question about how Jesus' time on the cross or in the tomb is a sacrifice when he knew what the end result was going to be? I agree with it's you. It's like being saying, I tell you what, I'll be chopped in half by David Chipperfield, but I know that really I won't be. That's the sort of level that we're talking about. How is this a sacrifice? Would you please answer that question? Mr. Jones, if I can call you Mr. Jones. I respect you, okay? And here's here's the answer. Yes, I agree with you. It was an easy thing for God to raise himself from the dead. The hard part was coming down and suffering and fulfilling everything that was, was prophesied before that and, and doing it 
all in front of all the angels. He had an audience. Actually, and, and I, he, I, actually, I would say that he was a facile. The creator of the universe has performance he, anxiety. When he he performance anxiety. Exactly. Nervous. He's Listen, infinitely he, powerful, he and he's nervous in front of in, imaginary beings called angels. When he's he's nervous. nervous. He's, he, he's, something's That's hard. How can something be difficult for an impotent I'm being? Like, I'm 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 impotent. I'm omnipotent. I'm not an omnipotent I'm being. How can something be difficult? How can You're something be difficult for something that has no limit to their power? Difficult. You're saying it's hard, man. Listen to you. This is a badly thought out, humanly manufactured story. No, I disagree. What well, was your let's question? get back to the question that Nonstop Collector asked you. How is this difficult for Jesus? You know, a couple of times he almost gave up on us. I'm oh. asking you a question. Will you yeah. ask it? Answer it, please. What was the question? How is it difficult? Yeah, to, put up way with us, put up, to put up with us for one thing. Dude, you're not that bad. Like, this, this self-hatred of, of Christianity is one of the reasons I find it so abhorrent. Like, it teaches, listen to you, you're saying that you're so bad that an infinitely powerful being can't put up with you. Like, man, you're not that bad. Nobody in the world is that bad. Like, I'm not saying, the, the, I'm not self, saying that I'm not this, this self-hatred of, of humanity, man. Humanity is not that bad. Humanity can generally be looked at by, from a certain perspective as being pretty good. Come you know, on. we're all, we're all in this together. Really? We're, 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 we're pretty good? The guy from walks a into the theater, from a theater and blows, you know, 71 people almost away? We're over here blowing up. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly you sorry. I, 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 I know that people go, get man. frustrated. Right. No, stop. People get frustrated. Because I actually want an answer to the question. And the topic so easily slips off in a different direction. You were asked, Raw, what is so difficult about Jesus sacrificing himself when he knows what the outcome is going to be? How is that hard work? non to collector put it in a slightly different way. How is it hard work for the most um, omnipotent being in the universe? To have stage fright and what he got worried about performing in public. Are you being serious? Can you not yeah. see how ridiculous yeah. your arguments are? So me, I want the an answer. answer to the question. Why uh, was his please. sacrifice so difficult for him when he knew exactly what would happen? I think he humbled himself and became a man. That's 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 pretty that's pretty hard for the Actually, most no, powerful no, being. No, 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 uh, not in the, in the sense, not in Thunderfoot, not in the sense that it's difficult for God to perform it. It's hard for the most powerful being in the universe to become a man, humble himself, be born of a woman, be raised up just like we are, and then to willingly lay his life down. Do you know how hard it was for him not to come down off of that cross? Uh, actually, no, this is the thing. He created According to uh, Christianity, this omnipotent being created all of these things exactly as he wanted. All of the angels that you're saying that he had to humble himself before, he created them so that he would have to do that. Right? There is nothing here that actually has any sense of humility or things that are difficult to do. Um, this a whole thing makes absolutely no sense, right? Where, where, where is where is the difficulty in an omnipotent being? Uh, can, let, look, let, let's just let's just play the role playing thing for a second. You're an infinitely powerful god. You have created an entire universe where you know exactly what how everything will transpire in this universe, and then you go down. And you sacrifice yourself to yourself. Where is this either difficult, and where is this some sort of sacrifice? <clears throat> it's a sacrifice, number one, because he said, "This is this is how sins are forgiven. You you can't have sins forgiven unless there's blood. That's that's it. He he made the rules, and yes, he he did. You know, you can say it was easy." No, it was but stupid. The hard part, he, the you hard say part. that you say that he made the rules, but he made stupid rules. Okay, okay, but should he have made it harder for us 
Let's talk well, about I'll us tell you, for a minute. I'm sorry, Roy. I'll tell you one way in which he could have made it much easier, and it goes back to a point that we were discuss, to, discussing before. He could not have created evil. He could not have put the trees in the Garden of Eden. He couldn't have put the serpent there. Now, there, I'm sorry, call me old-fashioned. Call me stupid if you like. But that seems to be one damn good reason why <laughs> it didn't need to happen. And I'm it's, sorry, you still are not answering the question of how the most almighty, powerful being in the universe spends a couple of hours on a cross and a few days in a tomb and knowing the outcome. How is that a sacrifice? A sacrifice for me implies suffering. A, 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 a sacrifice of some aspect of yourself to others. The fact that he knew that he was going to rise from the dead and go up to heaven means it, it, it is not a sacrifice. Would you please address that issue? It's, how is it not like a? How is it not just like a loan? You know, it's like a. It's like uh, boring. He's gone. I'm boring. sorry. I clicked the button too soon. Uh, there's someone else that. No, no. no I mean, I, I think you should have. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Say, I'll bring him back in. It was, I, I did. You, I have to you, say, you owed the guy. Please, at least. please, please. I have to say, it was an accident. I did click that button sooner than I intended to. So, fair enough. Let's bring him back in. I apologize, Raw. It was. A slip of the mouse. Um, but well, I, I, I think we were sort of wrapping it up anyway. I think we we're about. Uh, anyway, no, the DPR. It suddenly occurs to me we can we we can um, we can we can match God's sacrifice. We can um, we can sacrifice this show to itself, um, and then have it come back to life in a week's time, um, and that will allow everyone's sins to be forgiven. I mean, I, I'm sorry, was the point that I was seeking to make a bad point? No, no I mean, I, I think um, you're right that he was very evasive in answering fairly uh, some direct questions. He was, however, more honest on answering others, where um, he is probably the first guy I've come across who said that he would kill the child begging for his life if God told him to. Um, yeah, I mean, that, to me, uh, really does highlight the real problems with religion. Um, that when um, you have this mechanism that will enable you to commit the most horrific atrocities um, simply because you have the um, affirmation of a figment of your imagination... Uh, that that's clearly a dangerous mechanism. Yeah. Um, given the time, uh, given the fact that I have tried to get him back in the call, and again, I apologise for having removed him somewhat quickly. I am going to um, wrap things up. And can I thank very much Thunderfoot, who I know has uh, been taking a lot of coffee to stay awake. Thank you very much, Thunderfoot. I'll come to you first for final words, but also a huge thank you, non-stamp collector. And I'm sorry I've lost the power of speech, but it's now five or oh, coming up to five o'clock in the morning for me. Thunder first, then uh, non-stamp. To yeah, um, just one little point. Uh, for the last hour, I shifted from coffee to uh, vodka, which is named Stalinovsky, which, um, if I have my translations right, means the tears of Stalin. Great name for vodka. Thank you, Thunder. Non-stamp. Uh, no, no vodka here for me. It's midday. <laughs>